How do you get it right with whole life insurance, specifically focused on the cash value? Did you know that the number one item of buyer's remorse when it comes to whole life insurance with people taking a policy out focused on cash value is often lack of cash value, especially up front. I can't tell you how many stories we've seen. I'll give you one for example. Uh, an individual just last night and this morning I spoke with him. He was presented a policy of paying in almost $100,000 per year. He's a physician. He sent the policy over. He wanted to have it checked before opening. Another friend, a colleague, recommended that we look at it. $100,000 being proposed to be paid into the product. He had next to nothing, a very small percentage, it may have been five to $9,000 available in cash value in the first year and took about 10 years to break even. So at 100,000 per year, he's paid in a million dollars over 10 years and now he has a million dollars, negative the first 10 years. He looks at it and says, why am I doing this? And I'm just not comfortable being locked into this bill, this payment for so long. Now, he didn't move forward. However, I will say that many people do move forward with whole life insurance products that look like the example I just explained, next to nothing in cash value right off the bat. Many times people are presented options that have 50 or 60% of what they've paid in in cash value in the first year, but then it just doesn't look that great. They scratch their heads and think, Bank of America has over $21 billion in cash value life insurance. That's what my agent told me at least. But then I get shown this policy that just does not look good. Like a bank wouldn't put money into this. Where is the disconnect? Here's often what happens. When an individual sees a policy that is designed for maximum cash value after they have been presented a policy that they were told it was designed for maximum cash value or they've owned a policy and found it after the fact, all right, you're showing me a better option now. Why on earth was I not shown this before? This morning when I spoke to the individual, he was straight up and asked, it, like, what's the difference? Does it have to do with the commission? Many times that is the case, depending on how the policy is set up. I'll state this, in about nine out of 10 cases, the higher the commission, the lower the initial cash value. So if I pay a dollar in and I have zero in cash value right off the bat, that means that the commission was often weighted towards the maximum amount. If I pay a dollar in and I see 85 to 90% of that dollar in cash value in the first year, the commission was minimized. How do I get the right policy? That's often the question. I hear of wealthy individuals doing it. I hear of families that have established perpetual wealth that, that leads from one generation to the next, people using it as a financing tool, safe, liquid, tax-free. How do I set it up right? Because I don't want to be taken advantage of. I don't want to have buyer's remorse. And here's my statement. It is your money as the policyholder. It's yours, not the agent's. You know, a thing that really pains me is when we speak with individuals, I talk to individuals every day, our sales team does as well, which is very good. I like to refer to them as the education team because that's what we do. And then, then people buy policies from us once they're educated and they understand it. But what pains me so much is often we speak with individuals that have purchased a policy that was not set up for maximum cash value. And when that individual purchased the policy, his or her goal was maximum cash value, but they bought it and wasn't designed properly, wasn't maxed out, but they were told it was. So expectations were not properly set, misinformation, whatever, but then they feel guilty going to the agent and questioning them and saying, hey, why wasn't it set up properly? There's this fear there that you might offend the agent. And, and I do get that to a degree, as we always want to be respectful toward other individuals, but where I have an issue with it is it is your money. If you're the consumer, if you're putting money into a policy, we've seen people, people paying $100,000 per year. Some people have 90, 85 to 90% available immediately. Then some put that 100,000 in and only have 50,000. Some have zero. And they say, ah, like I don't really wanna question it. I'm just gonna leave it be because my agent gets upset sometimes. You know, Sometimes they yell at me. We've seen this and heard this so many times. And I scratch my head and don't get it. I mean, it's painful because it's people's money. It's your money going into a product. We should really understand it and know how does it work? 
Can I access it? What are the benefits? What are the drawbacks? And this way I understand it like I understand money in my bank account or other investments, my business, real estate, whatever it might be. Or I just want to know that I've got the best possible deal. So what to look for when opening a policy? Cash value. In parentheses, we've got policy design. Where's your money going? We're going to touch on that. We've got a lot of other content on that as well. Company selection. That's another big one. So number one, what does your cash value look like? Number two, company selection. And number three, this is a big one, flexibility. How do I use a life insurance policy as a flexible savings asset when I can bounce my payments up and down? Not a boring bill where I've got to pay, excuse me, where I've got to pay the same amount every month or every year. Here's what to look for, step by step. When done right, the product is fantastic. It is a safe, liquid, tax-free area to position money. The growth rate, the internal rate of return, will fall somewhere between that three to 5% range, maybe a little bit higher. And a unique feature to a policy is in respect to your loans and your money always compounding. Just like a piece of real estate, if I borrow against my real estate and my real estate is appreciating at call it 5% per year, I continue to get that 5% appreciation on my entire real estate value. Cash value life insurance works in the same way. If I've got 100, 100 grand in cash value, I borrow out $50,000, I continue to earn appreciation on the entire 100 as if I never touched it in the first place. And our policy loan video is going to full detail on that. Now, here's what to look for. Properly designed policy. Step number one, money goes into a policy, I should see if I'm max funding it, between 85 and 90% of my payment in cash value in the first year alone. Meaning if I pay in 100 grand, I should see anywhere between 85 to $90,000 in cash value immediately. Now, I'll add to that, that can get as high as 93 to 95% with some pure high early cash value products that some people like, most don't, but it is an option. So I wanna add that as well. Number two, break even point. When do I have cash value, or more cash value than what I've paid in? Typically, between three and five years. What this means is if I'm paying in 100K per year, by year three, I would have paid in 300K, and I should have very close to $300,000. By year four, should be positive right around that neighborhood. We're gonna show you an example to wrap this video up, or when we wrap it up. And then three, flexibility, not being locked in to high payments. So sticking with the $100,000 per year example, I want the ability to put in $100,000, but I don't want to get a bill for it. So we can literally pay $10,000 per year in this example. This is the minimum, that's my actual premium. And then at my discretion, I can add, add more money toward the cash value for a total of 100,000 per year, but I'm not locked into it. Next, company selection. A lot of insurance companies out there, you don't need me to tell you that at all. We can turn the TV or radio on and 15 seconds we'll see an ad. Mass Mutual, Guardian, New York Life, and Northwestern Mutual are your four major mutual companies. Going to the growth on cash value, here's what we've seen to be consistent in working with banks, high net worth individuals, and I had the privilege of working at a company where we pulled and were able to obtain on a regular basis historical data, policies that have lived the test of time. We've seen well-designed policies with these companies consistently deliver strong internal rates of return, meaning the cash value actually produces over time. We see it grow. It's not the game of just, hey, here's this great looking illustration, and then under delivers, and I'm upset as a policyholder because expectations were set improperly. And we've got other content on that as well around how policies actually perform. So a lot of info here to sum it up, and we're gonna look at this a lot more in the next several videos. Here's what I wanna look at. So often people are presented something like what we see on the left. We see a traditional policy. This is on a 40 year old male. Same company, same product, different design. $100,000 per year goes into the product. Right off the bat, $3,300.
100% insurance premium. That's where the money went. What's highlighted in yellow represents his break-even point. So year 10, he's paid in a million bucks. By year 11, he has more than a million bucks. All insurance premium. Often people buy this and say, why? Like, why would I do this if their goal is, is primarily cash value? That's what I want to be very, very clear about. If your goal, if you're purchasing a policy for cash accumulation, this is where I want this information up front. This example, blended policy, 40% base premium, 40-60 split, this is often referred to. 40% of the $100,000 is directed toward the insurance premium. 60% is directed toward riders that grow the cash value right off the bat. And you can see it right here, $100,000 goes in, 60% immediately in cash value. When's your break even point? Clean year six. And this is the exact same company health rating, everything's identical here. Year 10 cash value, we have improved it. But what's so interesting, as we progress on to the last example, Designed it differently, about a 10% base premium, a little bit lesser, but going back to that whiteboard, remember step one, what to look for if I pay 100,000 in? And this would be the case if I pay 10,000 in, the ratios, if they're similar, you'll see similar results. $100,000 in, look at this, 88% right off the bat. Break even between years three and five. Here it's between years three and four in this particular example. Depending on the company and product, it may be shorter or longer. Year 10, paid in a million, I've got 1.2 million. Same company, same dividend and crediting rate assumption, everything's identical as far as the product, the individual, his out of pocket, all assumptions, except for where the money is going. This is a policy that is designed for absolute minimum commissions within the boundaries that the insurance company and IRS allows, maximum cash value or consumer value, and that's the key. Then short term and long term, you see substantially more value. And that's the case if he wants to pay in for a shorter period of time, longer period of time, really doesn't matter. Across the board, greater value. So, cut that out, one, two, three. So really doesn't matter in terms of the company selection when I'm looking at the design. But overall, I do hope that this video was helpful. What we're going to look at next, which we'll have a ton of fun with, are actual stories of what people went through when they looked at whole life insurance. We see at the top, doctors, medical practitioners, you know, doctors are experts in their respected field. That's what they do nonstop. Typically, it's very difficult to replace someone who's very, very skilled. So they have a laser focus on their occupation. And then often, they hear these great things about whole life insurance, so they move forward with it without the awareness of what we just went through. How do I actually set that policy up for maximum cash value? So we're gonna share some stories. We'll start with them because we see it very common with them. But other individuals as well. Everyone has a story and we've seen consistency. So the purpose of these stories is if you are in any of these fields or if you're interested just in, hey, how are engineers dissecting this? Because I know they analyze everything in and out. So seeing how they do it, Perhaps I can copy that or just take the bottom line, take that blueprint and apply it to my own situation and a whole lot more. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Hope it helps and reach out if you have any questions. We'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.